All right, we'll call this meeting of the Tangerville Parish School Board to order this November 12th, 2024. Ms. Jenkins, if you would please call the roll. Ms. Richards? Present. Mr. Toller? Here. Ms. Abrams? Here. Mr. Westmoreland? Present. Mr. Duncan? Here. Mr. Anthony? Here. Mr. Moore? Here. Mr. Piazza? Here. Ms. Dominguez? All right, we have our opening program is led by our Vice President, Mr. Tom Toller. We'll turn it over to you, Mr. Toller. If you would please stand. I'm going to ask Mr. Moore, <coughs> one of our veterans on the board, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If you would remain standing, I'm going to ask Mr. Cole Mixon if he would come forward and play our national anthem, and you're in for a treat tonight. And I'll explain why I like that. Uh, give some accolades to the Civil Air Patrol program, but I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Mixon.
Next, we'll take up the um, approval of the minutes from our October 15th meeting. Uh, is there a motion to adopt the minutes as presented? So moved. Motion is made by Mr. Piazza. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Westmoreland. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call the question and ask members to vote your devices. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Next item is to consider approval of our minutes from our October 15th DRC appeals uh, special meeting. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? So moved. Motion is made by Mr. Piazza. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Westmoreland. We'll call the question and ask members to vote your devices. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Next item is to consider approval of our board minutes from our special board meeting on October the 22nd related to DRC appeals. Is there a motion to adopt the minutes as presented? So moved. Motion is made by Mr. Piazza, seconded by Second. Mr. Ms. Richards. Um, call the question and ask members to vote your devices. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Finally, we have the consideration of our minutes from our special board meeting of October the 29th related to DRC appeals. Is there a motion to adopt the minutes as presented? So moved. Motion is made by Mr. Piazza. Second. Seconded by Mr. Westmoreland. We'll call the question. Ask members to vote your devices. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. All right, next we have an academic update uh, on our early childhood B5 funding program. Ms. <coughs> Brabham is here to present that up update. Welcome. Good, Good evening. Glad to be here. Uh, tonight, so like I said, I'm here to give you the early childhood update. That's that, edu that's that educator in her. She's got to have that PowerPoint. And I bet you it's got a lot of colors in it, too. Early childhood. We've got all the powers. I know. Shock you on a handout. Yes. So just a reminder of what uh, uh, I represent Ready Start Tanchbo. I work for the school board. But uh, Ready Start Tanchbo is an organization within the school board. And so we have five goals. And that is for early childhood. And when I'm talking early, I mean birth to five years old, okay? So birth to pre-K is, is my world. Um, we want them to utilize tier one curriculum, even in early learning centers, formerly known as, thank you, Mr. McNeely, <laughs> formerly known as daycare, early learning centers. We want them to increase qu uh, instructional quality in all classrooms, early childhood classes and our public school classrooms. Expand access, meaning more seats, more children in, in our programs. Um, increase parent accessibility. Let parents know what there is out there to offer them in our parish 
and decrease those af adverse childhood behaviors. So that's, that's our goals. Those are our goals and that's what we wanna do. How are we doing that? So to address the quality of instruction, we are doing intentional coaching. So we have, we have coaches that are going out there, we're tiering our teachers, public school and early learning centers, giving that targeted support to the educators that, that are in need. Um, we have weekly office hours for public school where we're having them collaborate. We have monthly office hours for uh, early childhood teachers where they're in childcare centers and we're teaching them how to be teachers. Um, assistance plan so we're looking at our information and if they're not if we're on learning walks we've gone to learning walks in our public schools we go into our early learning centers if we don't see the high quality of instruction that we that we need uh, we recommend assistance plans and we go out there and we assist them to get that quality where we want it to be um, we also have class scores like I've told you before we observe every early learning classroom infant classrooms toddler classrooms pre-k classrooms when that data comes in, we're looking at it, and we're going out and providing assistance to those teachers, not only for a score, but because that represents the quality of instruction going on in that classroom. So we want to make sure that our kids in Tangy are getting the highest quality that they can possibly get. So how do we do that? We look at our data, and not only our teacher data, but our student <coughs> data. So we look at our beginning of the year assessments. So we can look at where our students are specifically not meeting our standards, and we develop high quality interventions with our teachers so that we're giving them the targeted support that they need so we can get them ready for kindergarten. Because as you know, I tell you every time I'm here, the most brain development happens before they even reach kindergarten. So it's my job to make sure that every classroom in Tangy is receiving or, or is giving high quality instruction so that when they walk in our kindergarten doors they're ready and our kindergarten teachers can pick them up and get them ready for reading by third grade right. okay um, so just a little bit about this year we are increasing our seats uh, we have remained uh, steady with 15 schools and our, we did not in, uh, add any public school classrooms this year we have 978 students and if you look at my little graph uh, we took a dip in COVID, but we're back up to where this is the most pre-K kids that we've had since we've uh, had a pre-K program. We have 58 children on our waiting list. Um, they're primarily in Hammond and Ponchatoula areas, and we, we don't have room to expand that. So we do have four off-site classes at our early learning centers that we partner with. We put public pre-K there. Um, we're up to 45 early learning centers, uh, three new this year, but when I first started, we had 25. So, and this is, I'm starting my ninth year in this position. We've increased by that much since I started here. Eight Head Start and three family child care, meaning in their houses, they have children that they are teaching in their homes. And we go into that home and we do an observation. Um, so we're supporting in-home family child cares as well. So we're also impacting the workforce because as we increase seats, we need more teachers. And as each of you know, we have teacher shortages in public schools and, and all over the country. So we have partnered with, we had a grant from the state, the state picked us and Washington Parish actually, and we developed a program where our Advanced College and Career Magnet Center is partnering with North Shore Community College these, uh, we have seven high school juniors and seniors, four seniors, three juniors. They are at the College and Career Magnet Center learning uh, child development. They're working on a child development associate. So it's dual enrollment. They have to do that coursework, and Ms. Katie Splain is the instructor there. And they have to get 480 hours of work experience. So we are placing them in our high quality, they have to be high quality, child care centers, and they're working. This grant pays their salaries. So they're making $11 an hour, so they go to the Advanced College and Career Magnet Center, and then when they're off school, they go to these child care centers, and they get that work experience. And they get all of the things that we provide, too. Our coaches are going out there. You know, we're making sure that they're getting a good, um, lead in education because we want them to stay in that pathway to be eventually become educators. So then they have to pass the child development associate assessment at the end. So once they finish this, and this grant pays for all of that, so the student has no, no expenses. And the, the center has no expenses either. So they get an extra pair of hands 
we're training them and then when they graduate they have the potential to stay there the, the child care center would have to uh, to to hire them uh, because the grant will run out we're only paying for 480 hours but uh, when they enter that workforce their pay rate will be higher because they have this credential so they can enter the workforce not at 725 an hour at a higher rate because they have this credential so they have more opportunities there and our hope is that they stay and they either go to North Shore or Southeastern and eventually end up in one of our public school classrooms yeah. as highly qualified teachers with lots of experience and I put some pictures up here for you. So these are, uh, we only have one student not up here. She, she didn't get one on her first day. But the exciting thing also is we have representation from the entire district. We have someone from Sumner. We have someone from two from Amy High. We have Independence, Ponchatoula, and Hammond High. So that was really exciting too, that we're having those children, that I call them children, I work in children. These are young ladies. And they're very exceptional young ladies. They have a work log they have to do, I check it. They are logging, when I go speak to them, they are just hanging on every word and they're, they're very, um, they have a very good work ethic. So I'm excited and I've checked on them this week and the directors are all thrilled to have them. So they are representing Tanshapo well in the workforce. <coughs> Which brings me to uh, child care. So funding, you know, we're trying to increase our seats. And I don't know if you know, because not many people do, unless you have a child in child care, what the rates are. So we did a survey of, of the centers that are in our network of those 45. And these are the rates for child care. And if you notice, for an infant, the average cost is $211 a week, which is 10965 annually, OK? All the way up, of course, it gets cheaper as you go, uh, as the children get older, because you can put more children in with one teacher. For an infant, you can only have one teacher to five infants, and that's it. But you still have to pay that teacher a living wage. So that's why it's much more expensive. And it's also why lots of early learning centers avoid infants, because of the, the cost. So um, I wanted to show you this, because um, if you look at the bottom, the annual salary based on minimum wage is 15000 So if I'm a single mom and I'm making minimum wage, am I going to work if I have to pay the child care almost $11,000? I am not. So that's why we're trying to raise funding to help out our families, to help them go to school. They have to go to school or they have to be uh, working at least 20 hours a week to get a leg up and to improve so that this is not holding them back out of the workforce. Because if parents don't have care, they can't go to work. And then we don't have employees to help us um, throughout our district. You know, So then employers are looking for help all the time. So we're raising funds because we do have a B3 program. And um, we had 313 children in that at the start of the year. Well. Funding was decreased because of legislation. So we are tasked with uh, attrition on that. So as children age up, we're not allowed to add more children. We're already down 200 children since June 30th. So right now we're currently serving 213 children. These will be funded until June 25th. We do not know how many B3 seats we'll have for the um, upcoming year because we have to ask for those seats through our coordinated funding request. We're going to ask for at least 313 because we were serving that and we have a waiting list of um, at least 200 kids who we haven't even gotten documentation from. We get calls all day, every day. Mondays are appointment days and we, we take their information and put them on a waiting list so that when we have funding available, we can help them find high quality childcare to get these children educated and get their parents in the workforce. Um, so how are we fundraising? I'm out in the community trying to pa pass this message along, trying to network with businesses, especially businesses that their employees can benefit from qualifying for this, par this program to get their children in high quality care. The next thing that we're doing is uh, a Commodore's Give Back Day. So we're excited about that. That's going to be next Thursday, the 21st. They're donating 10% of their proceeds back to us. So all of that money goes towards seats, and a seat means somebody in a child care uh, setting. So um, anybody zero to three years old, we look at that really long waiting list, and we try to make a parent's day and get them, get them in that workforce. So that's in a big nutshell on what early childhood is, um, what's happening in early childhood, so I'll be happy to answer 
any questions what, that you may have. How much money does it cost to add another kid to the program? Just a round figure? Well, um, a year, if it's an infant, $10,000. $10,000, but I'll give you a little bit of what we're doing now. Like a month right now, the children in B3, we're spending, in the month of October, we spent $219,966. So the part that I forgot to mention is if our goal is to raise $150,000 by January 31st. If we, any money we generate, the state matches dollar for dollar. So if we raise one fifty, dollars that's going to give us $300,000. Yeah. But we're spending two nineteen a month right now. So we're only talking about if we if we get our goal, we're talking about twenty seven infants, thirty one toddlers, and thirty four pre K kids. But of course, it can be a, a combination of any of those. Um, so it's 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 expensive. But um, they're not going to give us three hundred thirteen B three seats next year because the program has been cut. Uh, but I'm going to ask for them. Um, but they're at they're tasking us with generating local funds to try to help supplement this program. So in a perfect world, how much money do you think you're going to need for the upcoming year? I know you said 150, but you're trying to grow. In a perfect world? In a we, perfect world. We just, for this year to do 313, we had 1.9 million. So we could, uh, LA4 goes up to, you know, 3 million. I've had up to, last year my whole program was $9 million. This year it's cut in half. So we had lots of money, you know, we had... ESSER funds and dollars, COVID dollars came down to early learning centers too. But the, the parents are out there, they're calling us and it, it, it's difficult because they're trying to go to work, they're trying to go to school, they cannot afford those prices and so we're taking that information and in hopes to get them some assistance so they can get out there. Any other questions from the board? Thank you, ma'am. Right, thank, thank you. you, for what you do. Here, thank you so much. <coughs> Next item are our financial updates from Mr. McNeely. The board members should have received your uh, check payable register for uh, the period between September 16th and October the 15th. Uh, Mr. Yeah. McNeely, you have anything mm -hmm. else? To uh, the only question I received, you may see that the uh, SRO is pretty high. That's not a month. That is, we've been working on getting their contract finalized, so that's dating back to August. So there was no increase. You still didn't find that magic pot of gold that we've been looking for. No. Oh, dang. Maybe next month. It's in Ron's office. Oh, okay. Maybe next month. Yeah. Not really a comment. <clears throat> Not really a question, but a comment. I get. I know y'all all get these same questions, and I get it too. How much does this desegregation case cost us? And it's staggering when you look at the numbers. Um, just last month, when I pulled out, I know there's other costs associated with our attorneys, but at sixteen thousand. The plaintiff's attorneys, 31750 Dr. Hatcher, 25534 Of course, Don Massey's 8000 So this month, $81,000. And we just hear somebody asking for $10,000 a kid. That's eight kids. That's that was, a, that was a cheap month, too. That's almost, that's almost two teachers. Four pairs in one that, month. That is two teachers, depending on what, time, what kind you get. In one month. Yep. And it's sobering. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to resist the urge. To, <laughs> I'm gonna, I couldn't resist it any further. No, that's good. But, but you're right. That's, that's a small fraction <clears throat> of what it's been costing small us. Small fraction. Um, but I've given that speech a few times over the years. I'm not going to do it tonight. Um, we're going to skip over uh, 4A and B for a minute. We'll move to 4C, which is to consider approval to refer policies J, D, E, and J, C, D, A to our policy committee. Mr. Piazza, did you have anything you wanted to? Uh, no, like I said, um I wanted to refer these two back to policy just for some deeper discussions on our appeals process, on um, our definitions of group fights and one-on-one -on -one fights. There's a few things that as this process has gone on that has been brought to our attention, has been brought to from administration, from teachers. I just think there's some things that we at least want to talk about, whether things get revised or not. 
it's definitely worth the conversation to see if we can improve the process that we have. So I am referring these two policies to our next policy committee. Mr. Piazza makes a motion to refer JDE and JCDA to our policy committee. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Richards seconds. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll call the question. Ask members to vote your devices. move to superintendent's reports and recommendations superintendent has a number of policies to refer um, at the recommendation of forethought would you like me to read those for you yeah sure <laughs> okay so sh the administration is recommending that we refer policies bcbb which is notification of school board meetings bcbj broadcasting and taping of school board meetings CBD employment of the superintendent FEA architects GAK personnel records GAMI use of pronouns and given names GBC recruitment IDBA sex education IDDF education and students with disabilities j g c student health services uh, it, all of those the administration's recommendation is to refer them to policy committee is there such a motion so move motion is made by mr piazza is there a second second seconded by mr westmoreland mm -hmm. sounds like this next policy committee meeting will be fun interesting lunch um, is there any discussion on the motion there's no public input requested on the motion we'll call the question ask members to vote your devices and the motion is to refer to the policy committee Did you reopen it? Did it take my vote? I had to change it. Oh, okay. Here it is. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Madam Superintendent, do you have any additional updates or reports? Mm -mm. No. All right, we'll move to personal privilege then. We'll start with Mr. Westmoreland. And yesterday was Veterans Day. I'd like to again say thank all of our veterans for their service. I'd like to thank fellow board members, Mr. Moore and Mr. Toller, for their services to our country. Mr. Duncan. And Mr. Duncan. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, also, uh, coming up in a couple weeks is Thanksgiving, and I'm sure everybody's looking forward to a break, but let's all remember to be thankful for all the things we have in our great country. That's right. Thank you. Mr. Moore? Yes, I, I would also like to extend my gratitude to the board members who are veterans. Uh, I, um, I do appreciate you guys service uh, I haven't been a member of, of the service myself I know that that takes a lot of commitment and especially for you Tom still still uh, serving um, I would also like to extend my appreciation to our teachers and our principals um, I know I've done this many times but uh, it doesn't get old for me I, I, I always appreciate it 
and uh, maybe it's because I have a grandson who's still in school and um, and he keeps me aware of what you guys are dealing with every day but I would just further express like I always do just remember these are kids they're 17 years old but they're still children they're growing up becoming adults they're dealing with a lot and so it just makes me appreciate you appreciate you guys all the more Mr. Piazza well I just want to say last weekend was rough started out on a Friday night when uh, Hammond High took it to me at uh, for Punch Tula I just want to say congratulations to Hammond High Mr. Duncan had a big smile across on his face across the field I could see it from all the way from where I was sitting uh, we got playoffs starting this week. All, congratulations to all of our local teams that have made it to the playoffs in first round. Good luck. May y'all stay safe and healthy all the way through. Um, I want to say, again, echo my fellow board members with the veterans. Uh, I was, had the privilege of going to a few programs yesterday, and they were amazing. But I want to thank the staff for putting those programs together because they were absolutely amazing. We had a young man tonight that was – put together by the staff. So thank the staff as well for what they've done for our veterans and for our veterans that make that ultimate sacrifice. Uh, we have a few people in our community that are hurting with some recent losses. Just make sure you keep those in your prayers and y'all have a wonderful Thanksgiving break. Ms. Abrams? I wanna thank all of the veterans that have served um, our great country. Um, including all of our board members here. My grandfather served in the military, so um, it's very much appreciated. Um, happy Thanksgiving to all of the teachers and faculty and students out there. You're gonna get a much needed break for a little bit. I do love Thanksgiving people, but I do have my Christmas tree up already. <laughs> With five grandbabies, you got to get started soon. So, um, happy Thanksgiving to everyone, and we wish you and your family the best of the holiday season. Mr. Anthony? Yeah. Um, everybody's stolen my thunder. Happy yeah. Veterans Day, football <laughs> teams in the playoffs. I really am yeah. really happy Veterans Day, though. I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, lightly. Um, congrats to the football teams. Thanksgiving breaks around the corner. Let's go get a week off, no calls for a week. So that's all I got. Thank you all very much. Ms. Rich. I'm glad you said that, Trent, because we're going to get calls even though we're off. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, we don't get holidays. We don't get time off. But uh, on, on another note, I do want to say that I'm grateful to all of the veterans that served, and we thank you for all of your services, and especially my board members. Um, and miracles do happen. I have to say congratulations to those cowboys. They beat the Warriors and the Rules this year. So we are so proud of them, and we're just waiting to see um, and praying that one of the three, and that's what happens. If one of the three go on the North End, you can close up the North End because we're all going to the Superdome. So if we can get one in there, we're good. Uh, so we want to say congratulations to the coaches and all of the kids. We, we know that you all have worked hard, and we appreciate you, and we are proud of you. Mr. Toller. A couple quick things. First of all, thank you for all the Veterans Day wishes, and, and also echo that with other board members that are here that veterans. Um, but I want to say this. One of the things, one of the students was talking to me at Sumner, and they were asking me about service, and, and I've told them real quick, I, I've gotten more out of the military than the military has gotten out of me, and, and that's a good place to be in life because a lot of people, that's the other way. But one of the most important things that I think I got that I'm still getting from the military is how to resolve conflict, how to get more out of myself than I think I can do, but how to resolve conflict and work through issues. And I see that every time we have one of these DRC hearings, uh, we're raising children that still struggle with the ability to resolve <coughs> conflict. Um, and when I see a program like the Civil Air Patrol, that these teachers are working with students and they're teaching them ways to, to control their self being able to sit still during a program, being able, the little things that you don't think about, how to dress, how to walk, those things that a lot of people think are trivial, those are the things that set you up for success and how to control yourself in situations where you're not in control. So I just hats off to that. I've already thanked the, the Civil Air Patrol for the Veterans Day program, but um, I just wanted to echo that again because it is a very good program. We need it to expand in every school throughout the school system. 
And then last but not least, on the, with the uh, playoffs, obviously Sumner's been doing a very good job. A lot of our schools have. Um, getting a lot of calls now that people have seen the brackets mm -hmm. and they're yeah. confused about the select. I encourage you to you know, explain to everybody that you can while we're in this situation um, that you know one of the false stories that was going around that we let it happen and we didn't have any say so and we don't have a say so but we did appeal it and we did go to baton rouge and we did try to fight against that but um make sure that we let people know exactly you know what we're up against on that and then <clears> last but not least after the football season's over i would like to see those that would like to participate and just a what I call an AAR after action review sit down and go with the athletic director or maybe some of the coaches and go over things about high school football from the public standpoint because I keep seeing little things from a customer service thing like how to get into school how to get out of the school the safety and parking the lighting different things and I have a great principal at my school he and I talk about this every game on how we can improve this but a lot of times the principals and the teachers and the coaches are up against such big obstacles that they just close down and say, this is how we've always done it. This is how we have to do it. I just want to remind ourselves that this is our opportunity at each one of these high schools to entertain thousands of people on our school campus for a brief moment of time. This may be the only time that they come to our school to see our school. This is the time that they see our restrooms, they see our facilities, they see our parking, our roads, our lights. And we have to make sure that we're doing everything we can to put on a good, not a good, just a good football game, but a good experience at our campus. And I think if we could sit around the table, those that would like to participate and um, get with Coach Vining and maybe some other ones and just, just throw out some ideas, how we can improve the experience at our football fields for everybody. That's my soapbox. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I guess I'll share to my, you know, that I'm grateful for our veterans. I'm, I'm grateful for, for everybody that um, elects to, to serve the public and put themselves out there. Um, I'm also grateful, though, to live in a country and a community that values and appreciates uh, our veterans and our public servants. And I'm reminded this time of year, you know, how special it is. To, to live in, in, in a country that does that. And I was even reminded that, you know, it wasn't always that way. You know, we, we, we have not always done such a good job showing our appreciation um, for veterans and for those that sacrifice for others. And um, I know we got people waiting on us, so I'm not gonna give you the long version of this story, but uh, you know, I, for those of you that know me a little bit, I'm a kind of a rough around the edges guy, not very emotional at all. I can probably um, count on one hand the times that I have literally cried like a baby um, in my 40 some odd years of life. But one of those times was um, on my return trip from combat in Afghanistan. And a little bit of background on that is that when I was in college, one of my minor was in history. So I spent a lot of time studying um, our wars, and in particular, spent a whole summer in um, in Europe and in England studying only World War II history, uh, and had been actually brought out onto the fields of Normandy by a professor and 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 told in a very dramatic fashion exactly what those guys experienced as they landed on the beaches of Normandy and how many of our um, great men died. Uh, and of course, also learned about what happened with our guys um, during the Vietnam War. So the reason I cried like a baby coming back from Afghanistan is that the first place we stopped at an airport uh, when we came back into this country, um, my fellow soldiers and I are walking off the airport down this hallway in the airport, and the hallway is lined with World War II and Vietnam veterans welcoming us home and telling us uh, how glad they were that we were home safe and and um and 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 so on and so forth and of course it just had a tremendous impact on me um and then the main thing that those guys did is they all offered us their personal cell phones so that we could hurry up and call our families and let us let them know that we were back in country and um and it was just a truly emotional experience and again a great reminder of the great country that we live in 
Um, but then I asked one of those guys, you know, well, you know, why did you you do this? And you know, you know, why did you put this big effort together? Because they were doing this for every plane that was coming home from Afghanistan and Iraq, because at that time both of you know, and so they were clearly there very often, you know, taking a lot of time. And so anyway, I asked them. And, and they said, well, because I wish somebody would have done it for me when I came home. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and our people do that now. Um, so anyway, it was a very special moment. And, and again, I'm just grateful um, to, to live in this country. And we also just have a great community. So yeah. um, all right, so we'll now move to our, um, our executive session. I'll receive a, a motion at this time to enter into executive session to consider our DRC appeal from CW, our DRC appeal from LM, our uh, litigation matters, specifically the case of Laquandra Jacob and Rakiria Alexander versus Tangible Parish School Board, uh, some possible litigation for, uh, against Intergy and the case of Eddie Gardner et al. versus Tangeville Parish School Board. So moved. Motion is made by Mr. Westmoreland to enter to executive session. Second. Seconded by Mr. Piazza. Is there any objection to the motion? Hearing none, the motion is agreed to and we will enter executive session at this time. Channel 17, proudly serving the Florida parishes. All right, oh, we return from an executive session. Um, on the matter of uh, Rakiria Alexander versus Tantro Parish School Board, I'll receive a motion to adopt council's recommendation. So moved. Motion is made by Mr. Piazza. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Westmoreland. Is there any objection to the motion? Negative. Motion to adopt council's recommendation. <clears throat> Without objection, the motion is agreed to. On the matter of um, 7C, Regarding possible litigation against energy, I'll receive a motion at this time to adopt council's recommendation. So moved. Second. Motion is made by Mr. Piazza, seconded by Mr. Anthony. Is there any objection to the motion? Hearing none, the motion is agreed to and council's recommendation is adopted. On the matter of 7D, Eddie Gardner, Eddie Garner, et al. versus Tango Bear School Board. I'll receive a motion at this time to adopt council's recommendation. So moved. Motion is made by Mr. Piazza. Is there a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Westmore. Is there any objection to the motion? Hearing none, the motion is agreed to. Turning now to Agenda item 4A, considering the appeal of CW from the Discipline Review Committee. I will receive a motion at this time to grant the appeal and issue alternative discipline. So moved. Motion is made by Mr. Toller. <coughs> to grant the appeal and issue alternative discipline. Is there a second? Second. Second was Mr. Moore? Yes. Is there any objection to the motion? Hearing no objection, the motion is agreed to. The appeal is granted and alternative discipline is issued. Finally, motion We'll move to 4B, which is to consider the appeal of LM 
of the from the discipline review committee and i'll receive a motion at this time to again grant the appeal with a slight adjustment to of alternative discipline uh, as outlined in our meeting is there a motion such a motion so moved motion is made Second. by mr piazza seconded by mr toller and on this one madam secretary will do a roll call vote i think that'll be two Okay, before we move, so the motion is to grant the appeal. But okay. issue alternative discipline as outlined in our meeting. So, we so, so if y'all, y'all don't have to. You can, oh, okay. Well, I'm going to ask you, is there any objection then to the motion? Okay. Hearing no objection, then the motion is agreed to. All right, there being no other business to come before the board. Uh, this meeting is adjourned.